Puckered lips reluctantly kissed the sour green fruit. Stung by its bitter flavor, they curled back tightly against clenched teeth. Two soft brown eyes squinted. A slender nose wrinkled. The stale, salty air hung so heavily throughout the small merchant ship that she could barely breathe. The ship was packed with passengers, cargo, and livestock, everything needed to start a new life in a strange new world. Animal pens filled the underdeck spaces around the anchor rope and the capstan that hoisted it up. The stench of sheep, goat, chicken, and pig droppings was suffocating and certainly didn't match the fragrance of the ship's lovely name, the Mayflower. Limes, gasped Mercy Clifton, plucking the offending fruit from her mouth. Sucking them on empty bellies is awful, she moaned, grimacing at her two best friends. I'm hiding mine, Elizabeth Tilly whispered, blue eyes flashing. The girls snuggled together for warmth around Elizabeth's tin foot warmer box, lined with embers from the cook's brick furnace on the main deck above them. Limes are not much for eating, but rubbing them on one's nose fades freckles. For the love of heaven, exclaimed Mercy, what a careless vanity if one dies of whatever they're supposed to cure. The third girl spoke more prudently. We'd best eat these nasty limes. Dr. Fuller prescribes them to save our lives, not our faces. Just because you don't have any freckles, Miss Priss, protested Elizabeth. Poking her nose in the air, Priscilla replied, Priscilla, Priscilla Mullins, not everyone has the face of a goddess like you, Elizabeth shot back, sticking out her tongue. Priscilla returned the gesture, and their sour mood dissolved into quiet giggles. The bed they were sitting on was a crude table Mercy's father had hammered together from scrap wood. For privacy, he had hung a curtain over some twine. This makeshift space they called their cabin was wedged among many others in the cramped quarters along the bulkheads, the sides of the ship. The girls huddled together on a canvas mattress stuffed with straw. Mercy didn't like the stubble poking through, but was grateful to lie on anything soft at all. Less fortunate souls had already disposed of their bedding, ruined by mildew from water seeping through the upper deck as storm after storm swept their ship. Mercy counted five weeks since they'd put out to sea from Plymouth, England. For the first two, they'd enjoyed fair sailing, but the last three were spent in misery, confined below decks. She sighed as she thought back to the time she had stood at the railing on a sunny afternoon, watching the next storm approach. The blue horizon would change to an ominous gray. The rising wind would drive the green waters into towering dark waves. Beneath her feet, the deck would begin to pitch and roll, and she would tighten her grip on the lifeline strung along the railing. Craving every last breath of fresh air, she would wait until the captain, Master Jones, ordered the passengers to go below and the crew to fasten down the hatches after them. Once again confined to the crowded tween decks, she would watch the Mayflower's helmsman at the aft end of the ship as he struggled to hold the tiller steady against heavy waves. Through a small hatch near the captain's cabin above, the first mate, Mr. Clark, called down course corrections. But battering winds shook the little ship, and the helmsman, his eye ever on the compass, could barely keep them on course. How terribly he cursed! With sails furled for fear of having them torn away, they would be forced to ride out the storm under bare masts. She can't bear a knot of sail, the helmsman would mutter. We'll be hundreds of miles off course by tomorrow.